What's up, YouTube family? Gerald Greenlee here with Cleaning Green Lawn Service in beautiful South Georgia. It is Thursday. Not sure if this video is going to come out today or if I'm going to put out the one I did Tuesday. Who knows, man? <laughs> I'm getting terrible with videos. Uh, anyway, I'm down at my shop. I'm going to show you what's going on. I finally got access to my shop. Well, I've been able to get through it, but this is the mess I got, man. Look at this. I drug out that sludge. That whole pile over there between the buildings is sludge. It's about six inches of it out in here, just soup, man. So I got all that out, and uh, so hopefully it can start drying out, but it's just a mess, man. It's a mess. But I had a little bit of clay in a pile over here, and I put me a, well, kind of a sandy clay dirt. So I put me a strip here so I can run in and out the shop. And uh, the guys are out working today, but I got a ton of stuff that I need to get done. Um, the fork came in for the X1. Uh, I stole the fork off the X1 to put on the Super S. So I need to go ahead and put that on so I can get that out of the shop. And uh, lightning got my light up there, so I need to replace it. I got a couple under that shed. I need to just go to town and get one, though. And I got a couple of things going on, man, with the V-Ride. It seems like one thing after the other with this V-Ride. I mean, it's got, uh, let me see what I got on, 600 and something hours. I got a problem. I got a, a check engine light on it, which is just like an oxygen sensor or something. I ain't had time to look at all that. 688 hours. Uh, this is falling off. So I got to get a nut for it. I got to put a new belt on. See that belt right there? I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's got several places like that. This is about to come off. Uh, I need to replace the bearings in that wheel. Probably both of them, but the part thing wasn't real clear to me on wh what I needed. So I ordered, I think, one set. I'm going to make sure they work for that. If they do, I'm going to go ahead and order another one for this set. Uh, I don't have the oil for it, but I need to do an oil change on it. Um, so these things getting loose, man. Then lost one there. I got the covers for this, and I leave these on. Um, hopefully, so I just don't misplace them and lose them. But obviously, <laughs> I did. So I ain't either one on this side, and I don't think all of them were there when I got it. But anyway, oh. And the tie rod ends that hold the deck under there. See the deck? <laughs> I've just been cutting with it like that. You know, <laughs> you got to have a mower. I mean, it still cuts good. Let me see here. Let me check this bag and see if this is what come in. All right, so yeah, that's them. I've been ordering from this company uh, down in Boca Raton, Florida. And I ordered some bearings from them. I ordered these from them. Uh... But these need to go under the deck. Uh, the ball joints come out of one side, so that's what's letting it sway. So I got these I need to put on. This is my new belt. Man, I've been getting packaged in. And right there, grass flap. Got a grass flap for the V-Ride. Um, other than the cable issue, I really like the grass flap. Uh, but the cables, you know, year or two. And yeah. in my experience, they break. Now we use them a lot. Because we don't, we try not to run them closed unless they need to be closed. Because down here we got so much sand, it's terrible on the decks. So, you know, we try to keep that in mind. Um, anyway, I need to get the fork. It's in the truck too. I need to get the fork out of the truck. And we're going to get in there and get the X1 took care of first. So I can uh, get it out of the shop. You see it's packed down pretty good though. See where I'm walking at here. My footprints. Uh, I drove through this when it was full of water, so we're definitely better than that. Uh, my plan is I think I'm going to get a couple loads of dirt brought out. I'm going to build all this back up, pack it down good. And then uh, over where the church is at, there's a company that sells the uh, like crushed up concrete. I forget what they call that stuff, but uh, it sounds like the price of it. Uh, was really good. My only concern with it is if it's got a lot of sharp edges in it, maybe. 
um, you know, I don't, because when them trailers turn coming through here, I don't want it to hit the sidewall of the tire. But that stuff is so cheap, from what I understand, I think I'm going to build this back up with dirt, and I'm going to at least have some of that brought in. And even if it's not something I want to drive on, then I'll put some rock on top of that maybe. Because my whole plan was to put rock down here eventually. Um, and this little, like, creek that runs down the side here, I'm going to have to rent me a mini excavator or something and get in the woods down there. But I could, that thing over there is probably a couple of feet deep. So it pulls all this water out there, but when it fills up, it can't go over the hump back there. So I'm going to try to get at the end of that and, and trench it and uh, make it where all my water here, because it's almost natural except for that hole that the water would go that way and then run down to the back of the property. So hopefully before we have any more, you know, three and four, five inch weekends of rain, uh, I'll be able to get that done. I don't know. We'll just see. Uh, you know what happened so anyway i need to get to work all right there we go i did as you can see i greased it put some grease in there filled it up good with grease um now my buddy gratz book gratz i know i owe you a phone call man it's been wild he asked a question so up under these nuts you have like some compression washers. I'm sure that's not what you call them, but they're not they're not thick, but they're not totally flat. So they're like kind of concave. And the idea is, is that you tighten it down. It has, you know, it puts a little pressure on it, but but not too much. And and so what you want is you want these where they'll where they'll turn. You know, but you don't want them like this one over here is a little looser. Of course, this one's never been off. Um, and I don't have any trouble with this mower as far as the wobble goes. But what you'll notice on some mowers, you get a wobble. And what it is a lot of times, that nut's not tight enough. Now here, I can pretty much bottom it out and it doesn't get too tight. So that's just how I run it. Now, I'm sure that in the manual, uh, it tells you the right way to do it. So there's a right, what I'm saying is this. There's a right way to do it. And then there's the way that I just did it. Okay. So, you know, what I did may or may not be to the exact spec. Uh, I'm one of those. I, I, uh, here's the best way to explain me, okay? Now, this can be good and it can be bad. But I'm, generally speaking, I'm the kind of guy that wants to know what time it is, not how to build a clock, right? When I ask people, I, I learned that from an old plant manager of mine. We go to a meeting and people start trying to explain why they were behind on this and that and what they were doing. He said, hey, I don't need to know how to build a clock. I just want to know what time it is. When are you going to be done, right? So, uh, you know, if I was working on somebody else's equipment and, you know, I'd probably take a little more time with that. Now, if I'm torquing, if I was torquing head bolts or, you know, something like that, yeah. You better get you better get a torque wrench. You better get the, the book out. You better do it right. But a few pounds one way or another ain't gonna make much difference on something like this, in my opinion. That's just my opinion now. Like and like I said, don't. There's a right way to do it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I don't have any blades in here to put on this. Well, I do have blades, but my impact's in the other truck, so. I'm actually gonna get this one ready because I'm probably gonna take the Super Z off the truck. I, I don't know what to do with the old Super Z. Uh, I'm gonna figure out how to adjust the valves on it. It's a Kawasaki. I know everybody tells me valves, valves, valves. And I've never adjusted the valves on any of them. And that might be why some of them run rough. Uh, I think you're supposed to do it first time at 50 or 100 hours and then never so often after that. Um, so I don't know if that's what it is. I mean, it's been back to the dealer, the old Super Z now, because I had a new engine put on a couple years ago. And it just, it really ain't never run exactly right since the beginning. But my choke cable was broke, and I thought it was the choke that was trying to engage. But it's not that. So they put new fuel lines on it. I mean, because it's an old mower. 
Uh, one time I took it back, had water in the gas, so they got all that out. I mean, I think it's either maybe it could be down to the valves, because I mean, I don't put new plugs, filters, you name it. Uh, so I'm wondering, valves or maybe the fuel pump, because it's, it's like it's starving for fuel. It'll run good for 30 minutes, like a sewing machine. It's like when it gets hot, it starts doing that. So if you know anything about that, y'all let me know what's going on. Uh, but it's aggravating because if you get out to the college and you need to cut an hour and a half with it, you know, the first 30 minutes it does good and then it wants to bog and just spit and sputter and ain't nobody got time for that. I love the mower. Prefer it over this one, over the X1, but, you know, time's money in our business and in most businesses. So anyway, let me get this thing out of here, get to be right in. All right, got this thing up. Got some supports under the wheels. I don't have any jack stands. I need to get some, but see that tie rod in where it's come off? And then this in here, you can tell it's wore out. Um, see, it's off the ball. So, I take these nuts off on both sides. These right here look like they just, they just screw out. Guess this thing's got a strike kit on it, man. Is that what that is? Huh. Guess that's why it strikes good. So, I didn't realize it, but the guy I bought it, bought it from does some really nice properties. That's probably why he had it there, so. Anyway, let me get in here, get this stuff off, and uh, proceed on. Now, most people ain't gonna care about this, but I'm gonna show you anyway. What I did here real quick. So you take these off, slide that out, so that's that. Now what I did is I screwed these in, I put them back on just like the other ones were, it's 19 turns. So like, that's one. Every time that, you know, so it's really, it's really not 19, it's really, uh, it'd be nine and a half full turns. So anyway. That's all I did. I, I don't know, you know, if I have trouble with my deck leveling or whatever, I, I don't know how much effect this would have on it. But anyway, let's put it back in. Tighten it down. I already got this side done. And uh, I do need to come in here and tighten this jam nut up good. But it's locked into place. So here we go. And I bought a grass flap for it. So that's the uh, packaging right there. A little bit of information there with it. We're gonna uh, get it cut open. This is supposed to be a no drill install on the Skag V Ride 2 with the uh, 61 inch deck. So, all I did is went on the website, grass flap, and uh, put in my information. And it told me which one I needed. So, cut it open. Let's look at it and see what we got. All right, I got the belt on. Got the grass flap on, got it heated up and bent. Uh, probably knock my space ride over if I do this. There we go. Works really good. Um, the bearings were fine in the front wheel. I took it off. I, I thought they were, thought it had a little wobble to it, but I guess there's just a little play in it. Everything felt good with it, so. Anyway, uh, uh, anyway, working fine now, so there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one out, get the X1 in here, and uh, see if I can get uh, the decking all leveled up on it, and I need to get it cleaned off, see. That's one of the things where it got left, and it's nasty, so probably take it over to the water hose first and see if I can clean it.